Hello, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here again for part three of making the Damascus steel, the gigantic Damascus steel cookery. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me. So you'll remember from part two yesterday, when I was grinding this kukri, I had immense difficulties trying to create a flat spot on the blade. Now, funnily enough, I was trying to do this freehand. You know, I did it on the flat here, supporting it and did that, didn't have super, didn't have great amounts of luck, but then I tried doing it freehand, still didn't have great amounts of luck, and I'm, I'm at home last night, and I'm thinking, how can I do this better? And I remember, I have a grinding jig. So this is what I'm gonna use to help me get this flat. So all I'm gonna do here is I've got these little button screws. I can go ahead and set this in there, just like this, and tighten it up with a little Allen key. Of course, theoretically, I just grind back and forth, but the trouble is I grind and then... So that's a really big problem. I can't let that happen. So I'm gonna see if this can help me out. So it's really crucial you use a height grade piece of steel for this. This is 15 and 20. Same steel that I make my Damascus steels out of, and that's really essential. I made sure that I picked wisely when deciding the steel choice. So I think that and a little double-faced tape. So I've now prayed to the Nepalese double-sided tape gods. We're all set. I've made sure that my flats are square with this, yada yada, we're all good. So let's give this a go. I'm pleased to announce two flat sides. Time to move up to 100 degrees. So right now I have two pretty good flats. This is something I seriously struggled with yesterday, but now here I have flat spots, which is gonna be seriously, seriously helpful. I've got it to 120 grit, 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 which is as far up as I'm gonna go before heat treat. Now, however, I need to work on the bevel. I don't know how much control I'm gonna have over the aesthetics of the bevel, because obviously, you know, this is not something I've done before. It's gonna be very difficult. I might end up having to revert to a convex grind. We're gonna see how that goes. But for now, this is a little bit how I want it to look. I'm gonna want the plunge line about here and then have it just sweep across tail off before reaching the tip of the blade. So now I'm gonna run back to the grinder and see if I can uh, not make too much of a mess of this. So now I've roughed in the bevels with the 60 grit. You notice I switched to a two inch wide belt. I think that was probably the right decision. It helped me kind of get in those contours a little easier than having that three inch wide belt I usually run. I also kind of switched down the platen to a smaller platen. I've left the bevels nice and thick for now and not as far down as they're gonna go because I'm pretty sure that it's gonna help me out to avoid bending in the heat treat if I keep it a little bit more stout. So the bevels themselves, I mean, pardon me, the edge itself, it's probably still around 70 thousandths of an inch thick, which is good. I've also filed out the little sharp bit, lots of controversy in the comments on part two yesterday as to what that little sharp bit is for, the, little, the two little grooves as to whether they're to stop blood or whether they're to prick yourself. Who knows, I don't really mind that much. I think they added a certain aesthetic quality to the piece. That's probably why they're there in the first place anyway. So right now I'm gonna go into the forge. I have a piece of pipe in 
there. Um, what that pipe is going to do, a piece of, piece of rectangular tube, is uh, theoretically that's going to mean that I can kind of uh, get a little bit more of an equalized and even heat across the length of the blade, not have any hot spots, and I'm going to go into that pull it out once it's red, about 850 degrees Celsius, normalize it probably twice, maybe thrice, you know, I've already done a normalizing cycle after the, after the forging itself, and then we're going to go into our Parks 50 equivalent oil for the quench. straight. This is great. I'm, I'm really excited. Now, my tempering oven isn't big enough to fit this, so I'm going to run home to the apartment and I'm going to stick this in the oven and, uh, and I'm going to give this a little temper at about 200 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. Please do be sure to drop a like below and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this format. I wanna try and pace myself, so it might mean that the vlogs have a little less content in them, but I do wanna keep the regularity there. Let me know what you think, leave a comment below. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the next episode. Tomorrow we will finish the kukri. It's come out of the tempering oven. I'm really excited for how this is gonna turn out. If you wanna see part two, go ahead and and click right there on that square. If you're new to the channel, click right here and go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow on the next episode. Have a great one, bye.